Welcome back. U.S. President Donald Trump says he had a wonderful and productive meeting with Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan. Speaking at a joint White House press conference, Trump told Erdogan the U.S. does not intend to part ways with its Kurdish allies in Syria. The U.S. President also said he hoped the two countries will resolve differences over Turkey's purchase of the Russian S-400 air defense system. President Erdogan said the two countries could only overcome their disputes through dialogue. He restated that Turkey is fighting Kurdish terrorists, not Kurdish civilians. First, we have to make a distinction between the two things. We have no problems with the Kurds. We have problems with the terrorist organizations. Some terrorists coming out of the Kurds. Which are they? What are they? PYD, Democratic Union Party, and YPG, People's Protection Units, which are offshoots of the terrorist organizations, PKK, Kurdistan Workers Party. Two senior U.S. diplomats have said President Donald Trump directly asked about a Ukrainian investigation into his Democratic rival, Joe Biden. Talking to reporters in Washington, Trump said he did not recall making such comments. At the first public hearing of the Congressional Impeachment Inquiry, Acting Ambassador to Ukraine Bill Taylor said Trump was preoccupied with investigating Biden. The member of my staff could hear President Trump on the phone asking Ambassador Sondland about the investigations. Ambassador Sondland told President Trump the Ukrainians were ready to move forward. In Egypt, seven people have been killed and 16 others injured in a fire caused by an oil pipeline leak in Bahaira province. The health ministry says the injured are being treated for severe burns. The Ministry of Petroleum says the leak was caused by a failed attempt at theft which left a hole in the pipeline leading to an oil spill. Petroleum Pipelines Company Chief Abdel Monim Hafez said the robbery attempt took place in the city of Italy El Beirut in Bahera Governorate. He said technical teams have arrived at the scene and are working to plug the leak. In Iraq, trade union members and students from Kufa University have joined the ongoing anti-government protests. Carrying anti-government flags and the placards, the students march from the university campus to the city center of Najaf. They said they will stay on the streets until all their demands were met by the government. Around 800 students have set up a camp outside provincial government headquarters in the southern port city of Basra. Schools have also been closed in the protest hotspots of Divania and Nasaria. 300 protesters have been killed since the demonstrations began on October 1st. Pakistan's Foreign Secretary Sohail Mahmood says India's Supreme Court verdict on the Babri Mosque case fails to uphold justice. Briefing OIC ambassadors in Islamabad, Mahmood said the decision highlights the vulnerabilities of Muslims in India. He said contrary to Indian claims of it being an internal matter, the demolition of the mosque has been on the agenda of OIC since 1992. He said the OIC has also addressed this issue in numerous resolutions and declarations, including at the summit level. Last week, India's apex court handed the disputed Babri mosque land to the Hindus. In a unanimous decision, the top court said 2.77 acres of land will be given to Hindus in next three months through a trust. The President of Azad Kashmir, Sardar Masood Khan, has warned that the threat of a war between India and Pakistan is looming over South Asia. This report has more. Dr. Maria Sultan. Addressing the Magla dialogue in Islamabad, Khan said India's illegal annexation of occupied Kashmir is unacceptable to Pakistan and the people of Kashmir. If diplomacy is not initiated, Kashmiris will be forced and pushed to armed resistance. Although right now I can tell you that the majority of the Kashmiris are unarmed. Speaking at the event, Pakistan's Foreign Office spokesperson Mohammad Faisal said Kashmiri's right to self-determination is sacred and non-negotiable for Islamabad. He said India is trying to establish its hegemony over South Asia. It is a very dangerous trend because the state is trying to saffronize or Hinduize the entire setup in India. And sane voices within India are questioning whatever the Indian state is doing. 
uh, it is it is a very very serious thing not just for pakistan also the muslim minority in india and other minorities faisal said the bjp administration in new delhi is serving as a platform for the extremist hindutva ideology isa nakvi indus news islamabad It's been around a month since protests erupted in Chile and they are showing no signs of abating. This is despite the local police's use of brutal tactics to intimidate demonstrators including firing pellet guns which blind people. The use of these so-called less lethal weapons first arose in occupied Kashmir where they have robbed hundreds of people of their eyesight. This report has all the details. <laughs> Chileans have continued to protest against government corruption for weeks. This is despite a brutal crackdown by local police which is using inhumane measures against them. This includes the use of pellet guns which can leave people permanently blind. One doctor says this is the first time he's seen these kinds of injuries. The number of blindness cases here is tragically high. much more than other conflict zones like Hong Kong or the Yellow West in Paris or Spain or the Palestine. The Chilean police has also fired live rounds at demonstrators multiple times since the protests started. Despite the threat of being killed or left blind, people say they will continue to come out on the streets. The truth is I have more anger than fear. more hate than grief and it is against those people who are out there shooting mutilating people torturing them solo sentí que se me cerró el ojo y no lo podía abrir the chilean police's tactics are not new in occupied jammu and kashmir indian occupying forces have been shooting kashmiris with pellet guns since 2010 It can be argued that if the international community had taken strong action against the practice in occupied Kashmir, this crowd control technique would not be used against Chileans today. Bolivia's former president Evo Morales has condemned US recognition of the country's new de facto government. Earlier, US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo congratulated Janine Anes, a Bolivian senator who became Mexico City. Morales called for a national dialogue to end violence in his country. He slammed findings by the Organization of American States alleging serious irregularities during recent election. He said the OAS is in the service of the North American empire and it took a political, not a legal decision. He added the appointment of Janine Anes as interim president confirms the nature of the coup against him. Meanwhile, the interim president pledged to hold a new elections as soon as possible. In Brazil, supporters of Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido have stormed the Venezuelan embassy in the country's capital, Brasilia. This led to a standoff with the backers of President Nicolas Maduro. The confrontation has threatened to create a diplomatic crisis as the BRICS summit kicked off in the Brazilian capital. In a tweet, the Venezuelan foreign minister said the embassy was invaded at dawn. He called on Brazil to respect the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. Over 50 countries including Brazil have recognized Venezuelan opposition leader Guaido as acting president. In India, pollution is getting out of control in New Delhi. as the air quality index has now entered into the fair plus category the central pollution control board has declared an emergency new delhi is one of the worst cities in the world for pollution people are suffering from respiratory diseases as a thick blanket of smog continues to engulf the indian capital new delhi and its adjoining cities have been grappling with their worst ever pollution crisis Residents are complaining of runny eyes, a persistent cough and dull headaches that last all day. Pareshani bahut hai. There is a lot of trouble. Eyes burning and even walking is difficult these days. There is a long-term loss of health with it. Absent winds are said to be one of the reasons for the increasing pollution over the last 2 days other than stubble burning. Particulate matter levels have been recorded at 500, nearly 5 times the healthy limit. A Delhi resident said breathing felt forced. Jab hum log saanse lete hain. When we breathe it feels like forced breathing. So we have to get out wearing masks in both mornings and evenings. Baat thoda kam hua hai. Air quality in the hazardous or equivalent category may provoke respiratory issues that can affect even healthy individuals. Sir, chakrane lagta hai. 
It feels dizzy and nauseating. Children and elderly are especially having respiratory issues. Infections are also coming forward with the pollution. The air quality in India's capital is expected to deteriorate further in the coming days. We are taking a short break. Stay with us. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says the U.S. government is borrowing at a faster rate than its economy. In testimony to Congress, Powell said Congress must act to ensure a sustainable American economy. The central bank chief said the U.S. budget deficit has soared to just under $1 trillion in the fiscal year 2019, despite low interest rates. Powell said borrowing has exceeded $23 trillion, while interest payments jumped 10%. However, he said the U.S. economy isn't doing too badly, even with its debt concerns. Negative interest rates would, would certainly not be appropriate in, in the current environment. Our economy is in a strong position. We have growth. We have, uh, we have a strong consumer sector. We have uh, inflation that's a bit below target. U.S. electric car maker Tesla is planning to build its first European factory and design center in Germany. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has blamed Brexit for why the firm chose Germany rather than Britain in which to launch its new Gigafactory. At a German car award ceremony, Musk said the factory would be near Berlin's new international airport. He said the new plant would make batteries, powertrains and cars. Musk said another factor behind the decision was due to Germany's engineering prowess. Tesla's decision to build a large car and battery plant in Germany is a great success for Germany. In recent months, we have had one of the most intense competitions with various European countries. Tesla's decision is a big boost for Germany as a center for manufacturing cars after BMW and Mercedes chose to build new factories in Hungary. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development says global investment and trade growth are reliant on a deal between the U.S. and China. In an interview, the OECD Secretary General Angel Goraya said the world is now betting on U.S. President Trump's comments on a possible agreement. Goraya said the global economy is going through an investment drought, mainly because of trade uncertainty. He said the trade growth rate has slipped from 5.5% in 2017 to basically flat. As a consequence, Guraya said investment plunged from 5% growth to about 1% and is slowing down even further. Asian stock markets are trading mixed after Chinese economic data showed the trade war with the US is taking an increasing toll on the world's second largest economy. Weak corporate earnings has also dampened investors' sentiments. The Shanghai Composite is trading nearly 1% lower after China's October industrial production data missed economists' expectations. China's industrial output grew by about 4.5% in October, compared to analysts' predictions of about 5.5%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng is trading more than half a percent lower. Tokyo's Nikkei 225 index has also shed over half a percent after Japan said economic growth touched a one-year low in the third quarter. Seoul's Kospi index has also gained a faction. Now let's look at the weather from around the globe. For now, for latest updates, you can follow us on social media at indus.news.